Hello, I'm Jody Wolf. You're watching Exposed January 5, 2017, 11.31 p.m. Birmingham. And topic, and uh, as I mentioned last night, be not deceived. And um, we all grew up, at least I did, grew up reading Hal Lindsey and others like him and he was always talking about the end days. And his books would get to describing how bad the end days were back in Noah's time. And he said that those days would return again in our day, but they would be much worse. Well, I grew up all along thinking that in our day, in order to be deceived, we would have to be given over to the Antichrist. He would have to fool us, to deceive us, to be so charismatic or anything that would make you believe this man can't possibly be evil or the Antichrist. At the worst, he can't go there. I mean, just look at him. Look how much good he wants to do. And I grew up all these years believing that he was the one, the great deceiver, the great liar. And the Bible said even that the Antichrist would come, but it couldn't come until the church had been removed, which is in Revelation chapter 4. Because the church is mentioned, I, I don't recall, 16 to 19 times in the first three chapters and not mentioned again, like after chapter 4, verse 1 or 2, not mentioned again until chapter 17 or 18. Meaning the church is gone, it's left. So I'm not worried about being caught up in believing that the Antichrist is going to be able to fool me or be able to make me believe that he is my Christ, my Savior. And I know so many people have that very train of thought. And uh, But guys, I have I got news for you. Um, but let me... I'll tell you several times or more where to find these things here that I'm getting into. In uh, this book of Enoch, it's called The Reluctant Messenger. If you just type in book of Enoch 1 through 60, then when you scan down and find The Reluctant Messenger, you'll see 1 through 60 and just click on one and then you can start going through it. I ask you to read one to chapter one through chapter 15. And when you get to like seven, you'll probably want to read it again and again and again. They're not long. It, it, one hour will, will get you through or less will get you through those first uh, 15 chapters. There's no chapter 11 in it, by the way. But what some may consider is holy in those days that's coming, it will not be. And uh, when we are all in our world thinking, it's very clear. Be not deceived. How, how, how much clearer can that get? Be not deceived. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. And it mentions be not deceived multiple times, um, 16 times in the Bible. Be not deceived. And um, not only in Galatians 6, 7, but if you read Galatians 6, 7 through 10, you'll get an idea. But at the same time, you'll feel like, you know, the Antichrist really has something to play here. 
And then when you think about it, you say, well, be not deceived may not apply to me because I am saved already. And I'll be taken out before the Antichrist could come, before the great deceiver could come. We cannot, he cannot come to power as long as the Holy Spirit is present. And the Holy Spirit is there in us. He's in us. And Christians have to be removed in order for the Antichrist to come to power before he can be elected the head honcho, which will be the it may be the leader of the UN that will kind of run things. And I'm going to, I'll get to that later. But look, guys, be not deceived. It takes on a whole, another whole new meaning before I'm done here. I'm going to do part one now, and I'll finish up on part two. And um, But then, well, there's not but one way to say it. You know, we all think or thought, most did, that the Antichrist is the one that would be deceived. Don't take the mark of the beast. If you do, then you're instantly in judgment. You, there's no escape. And my train of thought have always gone right there. I said, well, I can't take the mark of the beast. I won't be here. And some say, oh, yeah, you'll be here. You'll be here till mid-tribulation. I don't believe. I'm a pre-trib believer, and I'll stick with it. Um, but our thoughts always, you know, are being contained almost by be not deceived, meaning don't let the Antichrist fool you. Too many people on this earth will. He'll just draw them in. Guys, it's like in the twilight zone. It's going to be that crazy. It's not just the Antichrist that's going to be a deceiver. There's more to it and a lot more to it. And it's so crazy it will sneak in on you and in your life and you'll not know it so number one in my mind was always don't believe that the antichrist or the one who comes say, i am god don't believe it if you do you've been deceived and you're going to be swallowed up by him but there's something else that'll deceive you, that will deceive you. Even people like me, if I'm not very, very careful, even the best of Christians, if they're not very, very careful. And by what I heard last night, and then after I heard it, although it wasn't specifically mentioned what I was thinking, I did go back and open up the book of Enoch and I started reading again. Again last night. That's the third time this week. And I and I mentioned to you I've already read it three times. So here I'm going again. And then I found what I was looking for. I found it, guys. And I went back to Chuck Messler, listened to him again. Although he came short of saying, well, he came short of saying the words because Derek Gilbert hosts the show of Skywatch, which is Friday, the, the Science Friday show he's got. Missler was on it, and he interrupted Chuck, and I hate that when someone is teaching or giving you something that you can't wait to hear, and then he's interrupted, and the train of thought is broken, and you don't receive that message. But I thought through it and listened through it 10 times. And, and that is only a 20 minute, but I was interested in only the last seven minutes of that 20 minutes. The last seven minutes, I listened to it over and over and over and over. And then it hit me. It hit me. What deceive meant. There's another deceiver, guys. And 
it'll suck you in and you'll not know it. Um, also, this is another interruption by Derek. I'm going to tell Garrett, hush up sometimes. When they were talking, Derek Gilbert said, well, look, just on the 20th, oh, I take that back. This was posted on the 20th of December. And, um, or it was, yeah, I guess it was posted. But did you know that the Pope and the UN were here in our country for a meeting the 20th, three days before the vote against Israel? At the same time, I thought they were off in Antarctica. So maybe, I don't know, you know, planes travel fast. They carry people to and from in a day. So they could have been there two or three days, here two days, and then back in Europe for two days to cast a vote. But Derek said the Pope made, an, made a statement. He said that they were going to disclose and then Missler interrupted Garrett and he said five times hit the table no 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 he said he's not going to introduce he said they're here he's going to tell you that they have been here and he's going to tell you I won't get into that I want you to go to that site and hear Chuck say that. And uh, it's short, it's short. And to get there, you go to Chuck Missler, 2017 Prophecy, our digital reality, Skywatch TV, YouTube, December 20, 2016, with Derek Gilbert on Science Friday. Go there, it's a 21 minute, and listen to it. But when you hit the 14 minute mark, don't let anything distract you and see if you can pick it up. Because you don't want to miss that 14 minute mark from there on for the next four to five minutes, or, or not that long, two to three minutes, you're going to be blown away. And if you don't watch it, you'll miss it completely. It'll go right over your head, and then you you have missed it. But I'm not going to let that happen. I am not going to let you miss it. I'm going to give you another example of it. Well, let me go somewhere else first. <laughs> I bounce around a little bit. Let me go right here. This is Book of Enoch, Chapter 7 in this book, verse 9 through 14. I'm going to skip nine because it names a bunch of angels, part of 200. And then it gives their names. And then they took wives, each choosing for himself. And then it goes on down. And the woman conceived and brought forth giants. And then it goes on down to, to verse 12. Whose stature was each 300 cubits. Now, please look up cubits. Look that up. If you want to see how big the giants were, look up 300 cubits and see what cubits in feet. And type in, type in 300 cubits and see what it tells you in feet. You'll be blown away how big these giants were. I'm going to tell you how big they were in another way, but I'll let you find out what cubits tell you. Whose stature was 300 cubits? They devoured all which the labor of man produced. In other words, everything that man grew to live on, these giants had to eat it because they had to eat. They were giants until it became impossible to feed them when they turned themselves against men in order to devour men and began to injure and get that birds at that time 
these these big birds, you know, these big ones. They would injure birds. They would injure beasts. They would injure reptiles. Reptiles, now keep in mind, these were DNA created, and they were giant meat-eating dinosaurs is what they were talking about. Beasts, reptiles, and fish. They had to injure them to eat their flesh one after another and drink and to drink their blood. Their flesh, one after another, also denoted is one another's flesh. Horace Charles notes that this phase may refer to the destruction, destruction of one class of giants by another. In other words, they the giants ate each other as well. And uh, I don't have time to go right right now anymore. I'm going to end this and I'll pick up part two. I'll, I'll start on a part two. There will be a part three, but that'll be the final part. Part two is going to blow your socks off, guys. Jody Wolf Exposed.